was a special day for me back in 1944. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, the music. Louis Armstrong, Bing Crosby. Back then, postage stamps were three cents. But you know, if you earn $10,000 a year, you were pretty well off. Casablanca wins the Academy Award for the Best Picture. And Venus Ramey was a contestant in the contest, just like I was, but she got Miss America. When I heard the words, what a surprise. Wow, that really changed my life. I've been Miss Minnesota now for 70 years. Back then they didn't crown me gals. But we did get sashes and we did get trophies. Ah, oh, 70 years later though, I got crowned beautifully. So much has changed in that world since then. Pageant changes you. Even now, it, it, it's hard to explain what it does, but it does. pageant does a lot of things. I remember for me, it, it made me face this fear I had of failing. And immediately when I was crowned Miss Minnesota, people put you up on this pedestal. And they think the world of you, they think of you as a role model. They want their kids to be like you. And that's a high compliment, but it's also really scary because the last thing you want is to disappoint anybody. You, you don't want to let them down. And that was something I had to face and I had to acknowledge and accept. And I had to just take each day a step at a time and realize all I could do was the very, very best I could with that day and with whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And what the pageant did for me was really help me discover what my self-worth meant and what that was. And, and as a violinist now of 17 years, many people have often identified me with my music. Mm. And in doing so, I felt like I was missing out on a whole other part of myself. I wanted to figure out who Rebecca Yeh is as a whole, not just the, the part that's a musician. And so the pageant and the crown and this organization has helped me discover where my worth is in those other areas and to bring together um, the area of my life that has nothing to do with music and do that by you know, sharing my insecurities, my vulnerability and being open with other people throughout my year. When I became Miss Minnesota in 1988 and then lucky enough to become Miss America in 1989, there was no official platform in the Miss America organization. So I wanted to make it seem as if there was because it was important to me to let people know that I had played the violin for most of my life and really that's why I entered the whole Miss America system. So my platform unofficially became the fine arts and education. Every appearance that I went to, I would request, can I play the violin? I wanted to be able to showcase that part of the program. I always say even 25 years later that being Miss America will be the toughest job that I've ever had because the skills that I learned from being Miss America are the skills that I take to the job every day in the television industry. I'll never forget after being Miss America for less than a week and I was at an event in Atlanta, 2,000 people at a dinner and I thought I was just there to 
be an honorary guest. And right before dessert, the guy in charge of the dinner comes up to me and he says, Miss Carlson, your keynote will start in five minutes. And I said, oh, my, my keynote? And he said, yes. And I said, well, how long would you like me to speak? And he said, oh, 30 to 45 minutes. I had no idea I was speaking at this event. So I took a cocktail napkin off the table. I went into the bathroom, borrowed a pen. I wrote a couple bullet points and I went out there and I spoke for 45 minutes. Those are skills that you take with you for the rest of your life. About 10 years ago when I was working at the Oprah Winfrey Show, my boss recommended to me that I take Miss Minnesota off my resume. She said people would judge me by their preconceived notions of what a beauty queen is. And I was bummed that something that I was so proud of could possibly be misconstrued to mean that I'm not worthy of being on someone's team. And I thought to myself, how is that possible? Because everything that I did to prepare to compete for Miss Minnesota or as Miss Minnesota was exactly what made me really good at my job. I read the newspaper every single day to prepare for interview. I perfected the ability to talk to anyone about anything, anytime, in any town Minnesota. And I mastered a smoky eye and a matte forehead on camera. As a producer for The Oprah Winfrey Show, it was my job to be tapped into what was happening in the world. Who were the big characters? What were the big stories? So I think that question is always really funny to me. How is Miss America still relevant today? Because the young women that compete for these titles are not only incredibly beautiful, amazingly intelligent, and awesomely talented, but they're using this platform to change the world. If the Miss America organization went away, I think the group that would miss it most are those little girls that hunker down every single year to watch 52 amazing women compete for that crown. Because those little girls are the next generation that are going to be on that stage and changing the world. An experience that's unique to the Miss America pageant is the high expectation placed on the participants in the talent competition. It was like the original American Idol. People would gather around their TVs once a year to watch the Miss America talent competition. The Miss America organization is the largest provider of scholarship to young women in the world. A large portion of that comes from the hard work of volunteers and families, people like you, who love these bright, young, talented women and the pageant. Someone asked me after the Miss America pageant what I was going to do now that I was done competing. I said, anything I want. We couldn't do this without you. On behalf of all of us who have worn the crown, we would like to say thank you. Join with us. Join with us. Join with us. To see this through. See this through. To see this through. Through to another 70 years. 70 years. Beyond!